Hi, Linear Algebra students. Uh, this is one of the uh, exercises at the end of the section of, uh, on inverse of a matrix. Uh, and first of all, um, let's read the exercise together. Okay, we have a matrix A, which is a two by two, and we want to express both A and its inverse as a product of elementary matrices, okay? This exercise is certainly in your reach. So uh, you should look back at the example that we have done in class and mimic it as much as possible. Um, if you're completely stuck, then follow along and it will be just a second example that you can rely on when you will do uh, this, this kind of problem in your assignment. Okay, so first of all, before we begin, uh, it's based on the theorem that was proved in three YouTube videos and that we also have seen in class, um, that if uh, we perform an elementary row operation to bring A to a matrix B, then B is equal to E times A, where the elementary matrix is the one that has been, uh, that we get from I by performing the same elementary row operation. So the algorithm is actually quite simple. What we're going to do is we're going to row reduce A, but we're going to keep track of all the row operations that are involved, and we're going to label them as our elementary matrices. So uh, we have A that is equal to uh, the matrix that is given, 2, 2, 4, 3. Uh, and then let's uh, okay. Actually, we uh, I prefer I prefer eliminating the row first. So I'm going to select my first pivot, which is going to be this one, and I will do uh, row two becomes row two minus row one. Okay, so this doesn't change, and now we have zero and negative one. Okay, here, the elementary matrix is actually easy to write because the only thing you need to do is to perform this uh, row operation on the identity matrix. So actually, let's write the elementary matrices in red. I will call this E1. And remember, the identity matrix is uh, this. This is the identity matrix. And then we're performing row two minus row one. So it means that this gets changed by this. So this is the first elementary matrix. Okay, uh, second row operation. So we're here. Um, one thing that I could do immediately, I think, is to add... Uh, yeah, let's do it right away. I think it's a good idea. So we'll proceed here. We have our pivot of two. And we have a pivot of negative one, so we need to eliminate that four. We have here row one will become row one plus four row two. Okay. So we have zero, negative one. And then we have here uh, two, zero. Perfect. And now let's write again the elementary matrix. So again, the identity matrix is this, but then what we do is we change the first row. We're adding four times row two, so we're going to get the four right here. All right, we're almost done. I think we can do the, the, the next two row operations uh, immediate, uh, like at the same time. The only thing we have to be careful of is that if we do this, we need to write one elementary operation for, for each, right? Even if we're performing the two row operations at the same time. So here, for example, we will scale down. Row one is half of row one, and row two is the negative of row two. And we will get from this the identity matrix. So one, zero, zero, one. I, I, I crunch it a little bit, but you know it's the identity matrix, so that's what's important. 
Now, the order at which we perform these do not matter, but for the sake of being consistent, let's suppose that we perform the, the one on the first row, let's perform, let's perform it first. So we will have E3. So again, look, this is the identity matrix, but we scale down its first row by, uh, by, by a half. So in other words, the, the entry of one here, we replace it with one half. And finally, E4. So we have the identity matrix as usual, but what we do is we scaled its second row uh, by negative one. So here we go, we have the negative one over here. What is the outcome? Okay, the outcome is actually quite simple. What we did is uh, we took the matrix A and we used the sequence of elementary row operations to get the matrix uh, to get the matrix I. Okay, so I will just label this um, E R O number one two, three, four. Okay, so we applied four elementary row operation and we got to the identity matrix. This means by the theorem that I wrote in green over here that uh, we, what we did actually is uh, we performed on A these ERO sequentially. So, E1 has been performed first, so ha needs to be put first uh, in, front of, in front of A. E2 is the second that has been performed, so we put it here. Then we perform E3. And finally, we perform E4. And the resulting matrix that we get from here is I. Okay, uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase everything except the elementary matrices and the bottom, okay? So I'm, I'm going to erase, uh, will I? Oh yes, actually I'm even going to erase the statement of the exercise because I have what I need. I have the matrix right here. So here I go. Okay, so to answer letter A, okay, remember that for letter A, we were looking at the inverse. And the inverse, we have it already by definition, okay? So let's just recopy this line to, uh, to talk about it. E4, E3, E2, E1, A equals to I means that by definition, Uh, the inverse is actually equal to that. And now we can basically write down the answer. Uh, be careful of the order, right? So 1, 0, 0, negative 1. 1 half, 0, 0, 1. Then we have 1, 4, 0, 1. And then 1, 0, negative 1, 0. One thing that I, oh, oops, uh, 1 here. One thing that I would like you to note is that the answer that you actually get here depends on your sequence of row operation. So as long as you're consistent, you may have a different answer than me, and it could be correct. What's important is that it's consistent with your row operations, and that these row operations do bring A to the matrix I. Okay, that's what is important. So that's the answer for letter A. For letter B, okay, we're going to do a little game here. So uh, that's it. E3. E2, E1, A is equal to I. So the idea is to left multiply by inverses 
until you I you solve for a. So solve for a by multiplying successively and I will mention on the left, right? By and here they are. So e4 negative 1, e3 negative 1, e2 negative 1, e1 negative 1. Okay, so that's the order at which we multiply these things. So now I'm going to erase just uh, the row reduction. Or actually, I can even erase the elementary matrices and this because I have them over here, which is like pitch perfect. So, for example, the first step will look like this. You will have E3, E3, E2, E1, A is equal to E4 inverse. Now, the one thing you have to be careful is that each time you multiply on the left, so the second uh, step will bring you to E2, E1, A is equal to E3 inverse, E4 inverse. And then you continue like this until you reach your A, right? Which, which will end up uh, with reversing the order of the E's, right? The first will be E1 inverse, then you'll have E2 inverse. E3 inverse, E4 inverse. Now, we don't have these matrices uh, exactly, like right away, but they're easy to get, okay? Let's just do, um, yeah, let's... Well, actually, I I'm just going to remind it to you. So... Uh, E1 inverse is obtained from uh, is obtained from performing the reverse operation on IM uh, as the one. Uh, to the one, actually. There you go, my English. Uh, to the one uh, performed to obtain E1. So reversing the operation is something that's actually quite easy to do. So uh, E1 inverse, actually let's write them all here. So we look at E1, which is this. What we did is we subtracted row 1 from row 2. So the reverse operation will be to add row 1 to row 2. So it's going to be 1, 0. And I'm going to put the plus here just as a, as a sign placement, but you don't need to put it down. Okay. Then E2 inverse, let's have a look at it. Uh, it's here. So what we did is we added four times row two to row one. So the reverse operation is obviously to subtract four times row two to row one. So same deal. We have one and here we're going to get negative four. 0, 1. Okay, E3 and E4 are kind of easier to visualize. The reverse of dividing the first row by 2 is obviously to multiply the first row by 2. So we're going to get 2, 0, 0, 1. And finally, The reverse of multiplying the second row by negative 1 
is to multiply it also by negative one because it's gonna put it back to what it was before. So here we go, the, the inverse of E4 is actually uh, the same thing as uh, what it would be, uh, as E4 itself, I mean. So here we are, now we can write the answer for uh, A, and we have exactly uh, what we wrote down, but as a product, there you go. And this is it, answer to A, answer to B. I hope this was helpful. See you in the next video.